Hi, this was a uh, start of watercolour I did a couple of years ago. Oh, no, probably not as long as that. Uh, it's a couple of uh, silver birches. But it was going wrong and uh, I put it aside to be painted on in one of the opaque mediums. That I'm going to try to demonstrate now. Um, I've still got quite a bit of paint left on this stay wet and the membrane now is uh, disintegrating a bit after two or three weeks. So I've got on the palette here, I've got a lot of white, I've got light red, uh, vermilion, ultramarine, uh, cerulean for sky I used for the Karnak painting, black, viridian which I hardly use, a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of lemon yellow. My greens are mostly made with lemon yellow or cadmium yellow light and black. Actually, it's cadmium yellow. Here it is. I think that's the one. Yeah, it's just cadmium yellow. I've got I've got the lemon yellow. It's probably probably be better with them. Well, it's a more muted one, but I've got um, I'm sure I've got some lemon yellow in this in my drawer here somewhere. Oh, here we are. Uh, primary yellow. Oh, that's probably the same. This is uh, the French one. Good paint. Oh well, we'll, we'll make deal with what, what we've got here. So I'm going to put in the, the trees to start with. I think I'll use just this uh, finch here. Um, I'm using an auto, uh, a manual focus. I've focused, I think, on here, and I don't want the contrast to change when when I come into focus, when my ugly mug comes in. So silver birches, uh, well, that's a grey, a greyish white. So let's just put those in. It, it, it all dries very quick. So we'll, we'll just put this. And there are lots of sort of blackish bits, or very dark, with the bark is peeling. Burnt sienna. So I'll just draw it out and then we'll have another one here. Not quite as uh, insistent, but uh, uh, just, just put those in. We're going to cover it all up anyway, but not quite all. Right, and we'll detail that as we go. Uh, we, when you do a landscape, you really need to work out in your mind where the light is coming from. Is the sun at the back? Is it the right or the left? Is it overhead? Uh, so that you can put shadows on one side. So to give it a 3D effect. And also we, we tend to forget to put cast shadows on the trunks of the trees cast by the any branches that might be in the catching the, the light and masking some of this here. So Right, let's uh, get a nice big brush here and start putting in the sky. So the light, light there, so we're going to have a nice blue. So we just cover this up and just... You can, with, with acrylic, you can use uh, PVA glue as a, as a, uh, a medium to Dilute your paint, all dries very quick, that's the problem with the acrylic. You see, the, the paper obviously isn't primed, it's just. I just paste it straight onto the absorbent paper, the watercolour paper. So, but whatever we put on is going to be changed. But we're just covering up the canvas at the moment, the, the uh, watercolour paper. It's a piece of uh, 16 by 12 Bockingford. I think it's Bockingford. It's out of a, um, a block, uh, spiral bound. I think it's uh, Dana Rowney. Not sure. Uh, so we'll just bash away with. Bash away 
bit of colour, just get it, get it, get it on the uh, get the paper covered. This is quite an expensive brush I'm using here. It's a, a for, it's an acrylic brush, Acrylex, I think Pro Arte. Uh, I think Pro Arte is that's um, Dale Rowney. Lovely brush. I did a series of Venice paintings some years ago for a gallery and I, I used all these acrylic, acrylic sort of brushes. Right, let's just put in some, some distance, some trees in the distance. Whatever you put on, you can modify. I'll put a lot of colour in this as we go. But I want this dark here so that I can I can counter change against against it. But I'm, I'm just priming the canvas for the priming the paper really to get the nice and in there. It's just just background to trees. some light, some dark here against the light of the trees. I had a pot of ready mixed PVA glue and water which I used to use but um, I, haven't, I haven't got a plastic container that's suitable. I had it, it was in a jar, a glass jar and I hadn't used it for a long time and the glue has stuck it fast and I just haven't the strength in my wrist to to open it. I've got one of those all-purpose can opener or bottle openers that, that will, will open lids up to three four inches diameter. A great tool but it didn't work because I couldn't hold the the glass jar with my left hand. Wearing out I'm afraid. Anyway um, all my greens are mixed mostly from, from the black and the, and the lemon yellow. It's like mixing uh, with watercolour, uh, Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber, what was the other colour? Uh, lemon yellow or light yellow. Right, let's put in some nice cloudy colours now. Let's get that coming on down there. Just build, build up the, the impasto. Try and make an interesting surface. So say, you, you, you start off knowing that you're going to alter. Oh, this is mostly a tree painting. So now we can uh, start to model the, the horizon a little bit. It's been a lovely day today. We've sat out in the garden and uh, I was at the Barbie. Well, lovely for England anyway. It's uh, about 20, 20, 18, 19, 20 degrees. I just, we've got our grandson with us and I haven't done any paid work so I thought we'd have a nice little barbie. It takes a while to cover the, or the, the surface of the, the rough watercolour paper. Right now that we're going with the We have blue, blue sky. Oh, that's a bit, a bit light, isn't it? But at least that's a good, good surf, good colour to, good tone to counter change against. A bit of a dramatic sky going there. Maybe the sun breaking through through some clouds. 
This all takes time. Just just blending and covering up and modelling. Let's get the blue in. Nice light blue now. Just light that up. This is just a bit, a bit dark. But you, I'm going to put them some lights in here, and, and no good putting light against light because it won't look right, will it? So we can just see how we go. I'm using a bit of light red mixed with white, it goes almost sort of like a pink. And then just the slightest tint of of um, red, just a pink. bit of uh, light in here. Okay, we could go back over there. Let's get on to some other bit of landscape down here. Brush in the water, Chinese bristle. We'll put in, uh, I'm really making this up, but we want that dark there, so we'll, we'll put in a bit of uh, Bit of yellow ochre. Just cover cover the ground up. I'm going to go back to watercolors once I've used all this white and or oh, all this paint in this palette. I don't like to waste it. I've kept it going for a long time now. Oh, mix a bit of yellow over there. So this is the landscape here. Oh, that's, uh... So we'll just have some nice we want to slope there. I bet we can put a bit of shadow colour in there. shadow of the tree coming here, or these two trees. Okay, that's coming up. Well, let's, um, I'm going to use this half inch flat, I think, to do the trunks of these trees. Now, silver, silver birch, That'll be dark on that side, so let's put a bit of I got this burnt sienna coming across. That will be uh, quite light on that side. Look at that black down the edge there, 
so that when we put the light on, the light colours and cover up most of it, it will counter change. So she's in burnt sienna and, and black in here, nice and thick. Remember to make sure your brushes are clean when you finish using them. Right, let's do, do one with this, the other one. Now let's just put in this creates a surface to scumble over, to dry brush over. This is where we've got the, uh, the shadow in there. Not a hit and miss, lost and found. So this one I want nice and big. And I noticed that a lot of the uh, branches come off and they're quite black. I'll have to do that with a lot of this with a rigger. It's nice black. This, a lot of this is going to be covered up with other paint. Okay, that's just the bones of it. Let's get that down in here. Shadow in there. So let's just put that. We'll put the shadow in here with a bit of blue and a bit of red, a bit of white maybe. And make it a like a, a blue grey. Okay, look, that's drying now. So we can scumble over that. Mm -hmm. right, let's go back into the uh, into this distance now. We're on a The air in the top of these uh, trees. <coughs> Never barbecue cough. Now we'll get this in here.
I'm holding the uh, brush quite away, away from myself. It's too, too grey there. Just line up a bit. Oh, we'll get some nice dark green in there. I think I put too much water in my jar, my grabby five litre pot here. <coughs> so, a bit of lemon yellow in there and a bit of the old black. Shh, my grandson would about to be invaded. <coughs> oh dear. So let's just some more red in there. This is a rich dark green. I want the landscape down the bottom here to, to show up against this quite a lot. Black and red, a bit of lemon yellow. You don't have to mix the colours thoroughly, just approximate and leave them like three colours in one go in one stroke of the brush. Okay, that's a bit more in there. The Queen of Colours, black. I think that's what Monet said, or something like it. Just put in some shrubby trees, brush. Give a sort of a direction to this landscape. Sighted with the rigger yet. We've got a lot of mercies on those trees. See nice rich greens here. It's a good, good exercise to just use three primaries, but I've extended that with the black, yellow, red. I can go back over this with the light greens and it will show more. Right, let's uh, get my little flat brush here. I got told off because I emptied my big pot down the sink yesterday and it left a lot of, well it left a tide mark and my wife was none too pleased. Right, okay, let's get in the, I need some more sienna, some burnt sienna. So I've got it here, here it is, burnt sienna. Let's just... That's quite a light burnt sienna. The Windsor and Newton comes up, or at least the watercolours, and, and the uh, student oil paint comes up uh, quite uh, dark, and it's, I, I love it. So I just build up some sort of impasto on here. And then we get a lovely light grey in there, on that one side. This is the sort of surface you get on uh, silver birches. The lovely white, and then you get the dark where the where the bark peel, peels away. Uh, 
And I'm doing this exhibition with friends at Denby's Wine Estate. I sold three, and two of them were woody scenes, woodland scenes, of uh, mostly silver birches. They're fabulous trees to, to paint because of the lovely colours you can get. Like that. I can put dark on there as well, a bit of dark. That's Just leaving some shining through. Hey, look. See that? that? That looks like a silver birch. Ah, it's lovely. Now, it's a nice silver, nice uh, brown in there. I can go over this, but I don't like it. Well, I don't. I'm going to put the white pack in there, the bluey white. Black. Well, let that dry for just a bit, we can go over that again. Do the same on the other, the other one. And then we'll do the black. Right, now we've got the shadow side, so we'll uh, put a blue in that. They're coming all right. Let's uh, do a bit of uh, rigger work. I'm not going to use my good rigger. <coughs> ah, let's uh, black. Very difficult to uh, get this thin enough. Put some leaves on on the uh, the ends of these uh, branches. Let's bring that up there. Can you still see me? Let's, let's get that nice and tight. You could get absolutely lost doing all this. Nice and nice and liquid. Here you get coming down, coming further in from there.
don't want to overdo this, but it's uh, very easy to because it's such good, good fun. Just some of these. We'll put some greens in a minute on this foreground. The brush is nice and clean. <coughs> and then, well, I'll do something with that when I think of what. Let's get my greens. Some light shining through. Bit of red in with that. I'll put my brush in a lump of blue. When I first started painting many, many years ago in my 20s, oh my, the height of my ambition was to paint trees and skies. Trees and skies. I've never lost my love for doing trees and skies. I find it just... Just wonderful, just just doing them. They are, they're not abstract, but they are me. I'll just put some lights in there. A bit of light in there. I don't want a lot of detail in the foreground because I'm my interest is the trees in this. A little bit of sienna in there, uh, raw, uh, ochre. It's a scumble over there. Just drag. Just put those lovely colours in there, just, just drag, lost and found. Uh, we got, oh dear, I've got so much water, I'm making a right mess on my lovely table here. Let's mop it up. Oh, oh dear, I'm really going to get into trouble. Let's just take some of the water if I can. Excuse me. Bailing out here. That'll do. I'm still going to get hold of. Where's my little rigger? Ah, oh, there we are. Right, the rigger. Uh, no, I don't want the rigger. I want my half inch. When you finish your painting, Give your brushes a really good clean and clean them with a bit of soap at the end of it just to make sure you've got all the paint out of the ferrule end because that's where if you don't eventually your brushes will split across like that and it will look, and you won't get that lovely straight edge. Oh, here we go. Let's, uh... Bit of black, just there's a bit there I'm not happy with. That I'm going to just go back with a bit of my my background colour, which is a bluish. 
I really just find that out there. That's better. <coughs> I'm still not happy with that. I don't think that's very good yet. Um, but I want to do some stipple with just some leaves that are left on from last winter's or last autumn. Just a few. So very tiny leaves, aren't they, silver birches? But I love them. I think they're such a beautiful, beautiful tree. Uh, it looks a bit mechanical. That too. Now there's a demonstration after all. Let's uh, where's my little brush? All right, let's get in some. Uh, see if we can get some really good good lights in there now. Lightest green. Just a bit of white and that yellow. And just push the brush on it. Oh, no, it's not working. And I can put some shadows back in there, but I want this is why I want some nice lights. Because it's catching the light from over here. This is all mostly dry now. Alright, let's uh, get some shadow colour in there now. It's just blue and uh, blue and red and a bit of white. Shadow. We can carry that shadow in, in here and there, just so that gives some interest to this foreground. I've got all the brush strokes going the same, the same sort of way. Right now, I wonder if we can put some very loosely painted. <clears throat> slightly darker blue. I'm just trying to show some hmm. just trying to show this these distant trunks and trees but not really coming off. I'll be out with the barbecue tonight as well. I've got a, I've got a bag of mussels, which will go on the. I'll, I'll do them on the barbie in a walk, probably. Put the lid. A bit of onion, garlic, and the Holy Trinity: garlic, ginger, and garlic, ginger, and chili. Do I reckon we could get a bit more, a bit more colour or a bit more light in, in there. Just a touch of sienna, burnt, burnt sienna, shall I say. Right, 
bit of black in there. Really, they're, they're, they're sort of bluey grey, aren't they? I always just put a bit of blue in there just to show in. But I'm fiddling now. But I'm enjoying myself, which you should do, that's gone wrong. Go back here and just mm. nice bit of impasse down there. Oh no, it not quite. You can keep doing it until you go blue in the face, until you you get it to look something like a silver birch. But just do this black here, just if you ever do something that's worth framing, you, you're gonna to have to put these sort of things behind glass because they're quite delicate or you, you could stick it to a piece of hardboard and mount it like a, 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 an oil paint painting. I tried to mix up a, a silver grey. I, I haven't got any burnt umber, and burnt umber is a brilliant colour for, for that. It's a bit better. Still need a bit, a bit more of the old black hair. Well, I don't reckon that looks too bad. Just get some darker on that side. Just building it all up as I go here. That really is, is more than enough. That's a finish there. I can't uh, really do much but I might, I'll just try to uh, put a bit more light in there just to see I can, I can drag over it now because there's such a, a, a dry surface now built up I can, I can do this. Just catching a bit of feathery light on there. That'll do. No more. Sign it. Put it in a mount. Oh, 
right there we are this uh put it in the in, in the blue mount see what it looks like Let's open that one. Just, just lift that up, look at that nice and flat in there. But there we are, that's, a, that's not bad is it? That looks quite reasonable, let's move the uh, camera around a bit and I'll zoom into it. Now that should, ah oh, it won't, let's go back to the automatic, well that's better. Now this is the middle distance and we'll just come up to the distance there, there's the trees sorry about that, I've been invaded by the body snatcher behind me oh that's what I've done so I'll just go back to these trees again. I'll be with you in a minute. No, no, don't talk. There's the foreground. In a minute. Is there any paint, any paper I can paint on? Just point. <laughs> yeah, do you want to see who's making all this noise? Where is he? Where is he? Go away. Oh, that's me. There is grandson. Right, okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Very good with me in it. Hopeless, lost cause. There we are. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.